how I really started my advocacy was through my own personal experiences of discrimination as a trans person. And when I came out as trans, you know, I experienced discrimination in the workplace. They refused to let me use the women's bathroom and fired me. There were so many barriers that other trans folks had in the workplace. And so when I finished college, I moved out to San Francisco in the hopes of finding a safer community. And also I want to recognize our amazing Trans Advisory Committee who um, advises our office as well as the mayor. Um, so our Trans Advisory Committee members, if you could raise your hand, give a little love to them, please. Thank you all so much for your leadership. My work here at the Office of Trans Initiatives is really supporting our team and the mayor around all LGBT engagement the city has with the community. And so some days that might be, you know, working with her at LGBT events or speaking and sharing the work that the city does. We also get to support like local policy and make sure that that's implemented from all gender bathrooms to making sure that there's LGBT data collection across the city. We get to do a lot of really great fun events like Trans Awareness Month. And we did a flag raising at the beginning of the month. Transgender people really need representation in politics of all kinds and I'm so grateful for Clara Farley because she represents us so intelligently and so eloquently. I would love to just take a moment of silence and really honor all of those folks that Nikki mentioned that we've lost this year. when I was 18 as trans and grew up as gay in Missoula, Montana. So as you could probably imagine, it wasn't the most safest environment for LGBT folks. I had a pretty supportive family. I have an identical twin. And so we really were able to support each other. Once I moved away from home and started college, I was really able to recognize my own value and what I had to offer. And I think that for me was like one of the biggest challenges is kind of facing so many barriers, even with all the privilege and access that I had. It was really about how can I make sure that I transform those challenges into really helping other people. We're celebrating Transgender Awareness Month, and within that, uh, we recognize Transgender Day of Remembrance, which is a memorial of those that we've lost due to transgender violence, which within the last year of 2019, we've lost 22 transgender folks. I think all but one are transgender women of color who've been murdered across the country. It's really an important day and month because we get to lift up their stories and bring visibility to the discrimination and violence that's still taking place. We continue to see attacks out of Washington and continued pushback from all the rights that were accomplished in the last few years. That violence and that kind of systemic oppression is continuing to impact specifically trans black folks. So it's really important to us as an office to advocate and make sure that those stories are told and really have a memorial to recognize them and come together as a community to heal and really remember our strength and resilience. As the only kind of trans director of a city department um, in the country, I often feel like there's a lot of, you know, both pressure. But working through my own challenges and barriers and even my own self-doubt, I think I've been able to really try to remember that the work is really about the action of helping communities succeed and thrive, whether that's getting our community housed, making sure that they have access to health care, and using kind of my access and privilege to try to make change. I would like to say something about Claire Farley. She has really inspired me. I was a nurse and became disabled uh, before I transitioned. And after I transitioned, um, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I'm back at college at Mills and Claire Farley has really 
impressed on me. To have a voice and to have agency, you have to have an education. Mayor Breed has led this effort. She made a $2.3 million investment into Trans Home. And she spearheaded this effort in partnership with the community, the TAC, and my office, and Tony. And we're so honored to have a mayor that continues to commit and really work to make sure that everyone in the city can thrive. I'm going to introduce Jane Cordova. She's resident in our house. Our community has the most resources, and I'm very happy to be here and to have a place finally to call home. Thank you. One, two, three. Even in those moments when I do feel kind of alone or unseen or doubt myself, I think it's the community and the power of the supportive allies that are at the table that really help me push past that. Being yourself is the word of wisdom that I would give anyone and to really be patient with yourself and your dreams, know that you're loved and that you're seeing and you may not always feel that from the family around you, but you can build and create your own family. You know, hopefully San Francisco can continue to be that for lots of folks moving forward in years to come.